everybody, Scout Crafty here again today. It's Friday, TGIF. Uh, you made it through another week, and boy, this one went really fast. Um, I'm still nursing my back injury, so we're going to make it a short one today. But I have a uh, some interesting things I want to talk about. First of all, we got some really good news from a couple of our members from our group. Uh, one is from Lee. Lee, uh, you know, he's the one that's the expert on insulators, the glass insulators, and... Uh, it turns out that Lee went to an insulator show. He was able to trade one of his insulators, and I'm telling you, these things can go big money. He traded one of his insulators and $100, and uh, he got a beautiful lathe. So uh, congratulations to Lee. He's uh, looking forward to it. He's going to clean it up, and uh, he's been wanting one for a long time, and it was so nice that he could trade and make a swap to get it. Uh, secondly, um, you remember the uh, mallet uh, challenge we had? Well, uh, David got his video together. He edited it down and uh, on how he made that beautiful Stanley replica out of, I think it was walnut and uh, maple, was it? Anyway, uh, we'll have the video link at the end of this video. So it'll be in the description. Great video. Uh, lots of fun. Enjoyed that. And um, also, there's a couple things I want to talk about. Let's talk about those rubber-handled uh, screwdrivers that seem to be the rage today. Let's okay, check them out. Okay, first of all, let's talk about, you know I love screwdrivers, right? And these are all acetate handles. And I, I'm a fan of acetate handles. And I'll tell you why. These are all 30 years old, at least, every one of these. And look at them. They're all beautiful. They all look nice. Uh, they're all, this one here... You know, did a little cleaning up on, but they're all beautiful, aren't they? I mean, look at this beautiful green, right? Now, every one of these look fantastic, 30 years old. Compare that to now, You this. remember when I bought these, I only bought these a few months ago, but look already here. And I haven't used them yet. And the handles, look at them. They're already getting, like, dirty. And, and I'm telling you, these rubberized handles are are just dirt collectors and if you're a tool you know if you like to keep your tools nice or something that look nice here look at this hacksaw this is lennox too remember this i bought this you remember this and, and it's not old and and look i don't operate tools with i'm not a mechanic where my hands are greasy look at that it's disgusting and look at the top here and, and you know you try and keep it these things are magnets for all kinds of dirt and i don't want to be sitting here every month cleaning up these rubber handles because the more chemicals you put on here the more it's going to rot and dissolve and so i'm not a fan okay i'm just letting you know it's a little gripe i got these rubberized handles they got them on everything now on cordless tools everything they stink <laughs> <laughs> That's my gripe. Okay, next up, we're going to talk about the hack knife. And the funny thing about this is a lot of tools are made for different industries and whatnot that we never see. And great tools you can use for so many things, like lineman's pliers. You know, how many of us have used them before? We're not linemen, <laughs> most of us. So uh, it's nice to see a tool that you can use in uh, in different areas. So let's go check out the okay, hack knife. Okay, I got introduced to the hack knife because years ago I brought a uh, fantastic stove called the Deadwood Stove. And I use it all the time. And, and it's such a great stove. So I needed something to cut down kindling to use for that stove. And um, I was using my regular knife, uh, a regular knife that I had at the time, but I, a hack knife came in perfect. And um, uh, the traditional hack knife looks something like this. And this one here is made by Footprint. You would know that's an English company. And here you can see uh, Footprint in England. It's a Sheffield. And um, it's, it's a, you know, a traditional knife. They were inexpensive. What they were, were they were just a piece of steel and you can see they have a sharp edge on one side. The way it's tempered is pretty unusual because from here down, it's tempered to hold an edge. And from here up, it's kind of malleable so that when you hit it with something, it's made to be struck with a hammer of some type that it won't uh, it's break and split and chip. So um, that's one thing that hack knives usually have in common. Now, there are different types here. Um, this one here, a good friend of the show, Mark Randall, who used to be an instructor for uh, for an electric company, and, and he used to uh, teach people, his uh, students and things like that, and then people in the company how to use these. Um, this is a little variance on the hack knife, still a hack knife, but uh, what this one is made for is for get going through the uh, insulation for electrical 
connectors and, and through the lead, they used to cover it with lead and things like that. And what you would do is this has a little lump on here and you would strike it here with the hammer and it would uh, break through the insulation. And we'll, we'll try and demonstrate that in a little bit. And, and here's another, here's a nice one made by Draper this hack knife you see here and this one's a beautiful one you know it's a knife this was great for again it's a uh, nice handle on here much better than the two pieces of leather that are just uh, riveted on here so this one's a real nice one here it's got a nice little lanyard hole and the only problem with this one here it's got a little sharp edge here and uh, anytime I take all the sharp edges off my tools because if you're going to be wrapping on the back of this with something, that sharp edge is just going to damage whatever you're using. So you could see here a long time ago, I took off that sharp edge so it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to do that today with this one. Now here's a quick example if this was some kind of sheathing around some cable, some wire uh, insula or fiber optics or something that you had to get into. You would take it like this here and you would strike on this surface here. And by using a hammer like this, you could split into the sheathing and, and work your way down the sheathing like this until you split it open, as you can see here. And, uh, and then this way you could get access into that cable all the way down by working it down just like this you can see and um and then split it open and you just work your way down i have a pipe underneath there but you can see how it's uh splitting open like this you see how we got access in there nice clean access without damaging the inside here pipe you can see so uh that's how you would get that off using the hack now you see here we just we only took five minutes but you see how we took that sharp edge off the back here we didn't reduce this thickness any we just took off that edge so that when you hit it with something you're not going to damage the hammer you're going to use it uh when you're hitting now another use for these we used to be remember the old windows that had the uh the corking around uh, it wasn't corking as we know it now but they used to use a putty it was actually a dap 33 that they used to use and um this would take out that putty and my buddy George brought down a couple examples of his hack knives and uh, they used to use them a lot in the schools and things like that to take out all the the putty from the around the windows and chip them out and use these for that job. now to make the kindling or fuel for my dead wood stove what I would do is I would take these two by fours that you could find these cutoffs and like if you ever go by a dumpster or something there's always tons of these that they throw out and uh, if especially if you get a nice straight grain one like this take it like this and then I would use this and split these down and uh, make uh, the kindling or fuel for the stove and let me show you how that looks Now, because this wood is so dry and uh, clean, when this burns, it's um, almost smoke-free. It's like burning a match. You have no uh, no smoke at all. And when it gets to this size here, you can use your hand to split down. And again, if you twist it a little bit, you could work your way down and make nice little pieces that uh, is great for starting the stove up and, and keeping it running nice and clean. You can feed this here. And again, just by using your hand, just by pushing it down, you could split this wood. That's what's great about having such straight grain wood like this. And again, it's uh, just by holding it, pressing it down like this, it'll split straight down and give you nice pieces of wood to feed in and to make your fire a nice, clean, uh, smoke-free One fire. thing about the uh, hack knife, because it is a uh, high carbon steel, it is prone to rust. These do rust a lot. Your times you'll see these rusted up. Uh, before I store it, I always take a little bit of my 50-50 mineral oil and Vaseline mix and wipe it onto the blade just like that and then put it into my sheath and then this way it'll stay uh, rust free just like that. That's all you have to do 
and it's good for until the next time you have to now, use even it. Though most times you'll see the hack knife used with a, uh, a regular steel hammer. I prefer using some sort of a hardened uh, like this type of, uh, of soft blow hammer because I'm chopping wood it's very soft so I always like to preserve the back of my blade so they don't get all banged up and marred up. So in closing we have a quick intro to the hack knife. Uh, it really comes in handy even though um, it seems like a specialty tool you can use it for so many things uh, you should check one out if you can. Uh, also check out Dave's video. I'll have the, again, the link will be in the description. I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.